Welcome to Blockchain Recorded, the podcast for the tech curious, where we talk about anything and everything related to the exponentially evolving crypto, blockchain, and Web 3.0 space. Our mission is simple, to share knowledge, facilitate discourse, and help evolve education in blockchain fundamentals, decentralization solutions, and relevant use cases for today's digital economy. We at Blockchain Recorded are not registered investment advisors and do not deal with financial or trading token elements, nor offer any licensed financial services. The content of this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only, while the opinions of all parties involved are their own. I'm your host, Nina Tserar, and now let's talk blockchain. Before I introduce our guest today, I'd like to remind our listeners to follow us on Twitter, where we pre-stream each episode on Twitter Spaces the day before publishing on all major podcast platforms. For the platform list, visit our website, blockchainrecorded.com. This episode is dedicated to the Web3 Stronger Together ecosystem initiative and its first virtual summit, which took place between March 1st and March 4th, 2023 in Evelyn's Metaverse, a virtual platform uniting several hundred Web3 leaders and thinkers, over 100 projects and speakers, and over 5,000 attendees from across the world. The purpose of Web3 Stronger Together, with which Blockchain Recorded is a proud media partner, is to demonstrate to the crypto community that the Web3 ecosystem is strong, solidary, active, and committed to furthering innovation despite the status of the market and nature of price speculations. It emphasizes the importance of fairness, inclusivity, diversity, and sustainability to furthering healthy Web3 fundamentals. The summit included many panel discussions with assigned topics, which Blockchain Recorded is redistributing in audio form. The last panel discussion from the March summit concludes the topic of DAOs with respect to sustainability and using DAOs to drive environmental and social impact. The speakers were Maria Pelch, Senior Manager at Cocordium, Andrew Kozik, co-founder of Lemons Animation Studio and founder of ScreenStory.io, Victor Lardet, Web3 and Blockchain Consultant, and Valerie Nemirov, Senior Manager at Henkel. The speakers discussed the importance of deeper community engagement with a common purpose versus the speed of execution, the problem of voting power, incentivization, and setting up mechanisms for the greater good, among other ideas with respect to DAOs. The following is the panel's discussion hosted by Olesia Kowalskaya, a key event organizer behind the Web3 Stronger Together ecosystem initiative and a co-founder of Ukraine Sisters DAO. We do apologize for potential audio drops due to choppy internet connections. We edited the recording to the best of our ability. If you are watching the previous panel about the DAO, we find out like it will be the real like conclusion of everything what we've heard before. But we will start with the introduction. And what is very important for me, I would love to invite you to introduct yourself with one question, answering the one question. What drives you and what brings you here in on this panel on the, the topic DAO and sustainability from two perspectives? One of that is the personal side and the other one is the professional side. And I will start like from you, like giving you some retrospective and example. I'm a Web3 enthusiast, as you see, uh, I'm a the Web3 Shogun Together team and I'm a co-founder for a non-profit uh, foundation, Ukrainian Sisters, which is loading now to the DAO. So that was uh, my the first idea which coming up to my mind whenever I've heard about the DAO. Like this is a real cool bridge for non-profit to bring uh, the real value for the uh, audience and for the community that we have, which is now 100,000 of women, and how we could uh, bring the real value to them and how we could deliver the, the people in the really uh, in the in the way whenever it's really needed, and it's not because it's only the war, or but it's also about the earthquake, about the hunger, about the climatic changes. Uh, on the beginning of this week, I received a um, proposal for the consultancy agency, which would help us to start the DAO, which is for fifty k dollars. And uh, on the other hand, on the same date, I received a deal to cover for exactly the same amount the wood delivery to the east of Ukraine for 2,000 people. And, you know, and I've got the dilemma, like, to go to the DAO uh, and invest money there or to deliver uh, the wood, which is also needed uh, to the people, which is, and it should happen on one time, yeah? 
So uh, and I've got this question and I come here with the one question. So technology is for the people or the people is for technology. And who drives the technology, the humanity, or it on the backward? So this is my side, and I invite you guys to share us why you're here. You can uh, go ahead in any way you want, like who is going to do that first. Well, uh, well, I'm Victor, and I'm going to live fully uh, my life, my uh, talent, and my passion to uh, look for my ikigi. And I discovered that the technology is really the tools that help this to go forward. I think there are problems with the microphone. Yes. Yeah. I think there is like an echo and something flips. I don't know. Clips in the in the headphones. No, oh, sorry. I, I don't know this issue. Can you hear me? No. We are here, like in the DAO. Now we are voting, voting now. What to do? You know, <laughs> to have <laughs> the conversation now. So we need to do it, like, and to decide if you will, like, try to com keep continue if you can. Uh, use your headset probably or something while, uh, while you're doing that we could wait and we'll, we'll give an opportunity for uh, someone else maybe you will try to do that okay we'll change so maria Valery, valeri victor andrew who, is, who wants to to continue yeah 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 let the react i'm the founder of lemon innovation studio yeah and we help uh, SaaS and ai blockchain companies uh, to get more customers uh, through storytelling and making explainers videos. So we worked uh, with One Inch, Solana, Engine Coin, Near the Dork, and many other promising blockchain companies. Yeah, and um, we constantly uh, launching new projects and bake. Um, personally, I bake uh, some projects on uh, Juicebox DAO, for example, yeah, to support the initiative. For example, we launched as well one NFT and raised uh, to 100k uh, using that technique. So that's briefly, uh, briefly about my background and in terms of my personal relationship to, uh, to that event, yeah, it's first of all curiosity. Uh, I'm very curious, uh, love to learn about uh, new projects, new opportunities, uh, new people, because it helps me uh, to fulfill my inner curiosity, yeah, and to do great things, yeah, as like back new projects or create something new. In terms of professional, we at the company, uh, as a team, uh, love to find pro uh, problems and to find uh, elegant uh, solutions like in mass, uh, like uh, mathematics uh, could uh, solve very difficult problems with uh, an elegant way. Yeah, and I'm here to discuss some opportunities, uh, some challenges, yes, and um, to find brilliant ideas and I guess to help someone to find great ideas for their situation. Super, thank you for the word elegancy. I really fascinated it about. So, yeah. uh, so for it, uh, who wants to be next? Maria? Action uh, down. Living. Maria, yeah. welcome. Welcome. Yeah, so my name is Maria. I am with a layer one blockchain called Concordium. Uh, which has a zero knowledge identity at the protocol level. And I think what brought me here today was uh, I've been in contact with different people in the community. And, and I think when Matsin explained to me that this is, you know, it's built by volunteers and it's about having real conversations rather than these um, rehearsed and practiced uh, panels, I was quite curious because a lot of the times I think we miss out on some of the really important conversations because everything planned ahead. Um, so that was what really drew me into this. Um, and I've seen the panels today and I think it really lives up to to the expectations that I have. So I'm really honored to be be part of it. On a, on a professional side, um, what brings me here, I've been working with technology since yeah, for my whole life, actually. I am a business by degree, but I'm a techie by training. And then I normally go that I'm an environmentalist by necessity, which is I've always been very cautious of the planet and, and how we treat it. And I've worked with AI and I've worked with a lot of deep uh, tech, uh, but it was only when I stumbled upon blockchain technology that I actually saw that we had a really powerful technology to solve some of the challenges that we have. And I think DAOs is, you know, we have a, one of the grandest, most biggest challenges throughout the entire planet, but we have no means for organizing around it. And I think a DAO is, is one of the the best ways I've seen to actually organize around this and create the right incentive structures. Um, so this is a conversation that I'm, that I'm super passionate about. Thank you so much, Marinos. Already, 
Let me be, but Victor tried so hard to change the scene and join uh, in the different way. But you know, like he still tries. Let me be. Um, my name is Valery. Um, I'm uh, also Ukrainian, uh, originally coming from Kiev, but living in Dusseldorf um, and working for Henkel. So this is my, kind of my professional part. And uh, in Henkel, I'm trying to bring um, uh, the blockchain. Uh, we even have a very great blockchain department. But what I'm trying to bring more like Web3, uh, the DAO type of ideas to help us to grow, uh, to help us to find the new ways how to connect to our consumers who are changing very fast and their expectation from the brands changing very fast. Yeah, And um, one of the pillars of Henkel is sustainability. It's a kind of core of our value. And we were the first company, I think, in Germany, which still in the late 80s, beginning of 90s, were creating the sustainability portfolio reports every year saying what we did for to save the planet or to help at least planet to live longer, um, uh, which still kind of a big issue for us. Uh, and I truly believe that DAO and gathering the bright minds um, is the solution. It's accelerator uh, for the solution. The, my pro professional goal is to find a ways how to uh, speed up this process in Henkel with Web3 and with the partners uh, we could find. Uh, my personal um, interest is like I'm a very keen learner and uh, I'm happy to learn more about projects and startups and things um, and to see how um, people who don't know each other can create something meaningful and, and sustainable. So that's my key key interest. Thank you so much. Just whenever you mentioned the sustainability program for the handle, I can kind of, I just I just remembering like around 2018 in Ukraine there was a a, a program a sustainable program for the handle, and I was the one who was even the, uh, creating the website the program in Kiev, and I just I just I just match it now. So I'm really nice. You know that's cool. You know, so this is a big community. You know uh, how the community works. So it's just coming up in my mind. So, uh, uh, Victor, we are really uh, like well, like waiting for you to join us in this conversation. So hope you are well now and you're ready to jump in because uh, your time now. Yeah, I can, can you hear me when? Huh? Yeah, really. I'm thank you so much for your um, patience to do this. Yeah, so go ahead. Tell us about you. All right, good. Sorry about that. Uh, I also have a bit of action. I'm uh, Victor and uh, my industrial since three years. My mission is to bring education about this and it's why I found that where we we see how to become a freelance and entrepreneurs and get trees to discover you ikige, um your natural talent to live truly from your passion. It's okay. You know, I was uh, thinking whenever you were speaking, uh, and we still have uh, some sound for that. And I was thinking like this is also the inclusivity in some way. Like whenever we accept everything that is happening around, just because we are interested in you now. So, um, I to bring it uh, to the next step of uh, this question, because, uh, this is a question that I'm curious about, about the advantages for the DAO and the, uh, like the drawbacks of it. Like, so we are all looking, like from my perspective, for the transparency for all the transactions that we can do for non-profit, which is uh, important for, from the donor side and from the beneficiary side. Yeah, we are. And also what I'm looking for is for the centralized decision from the like, stakeholders of the non-profit and also like my biggest dream is to invite all the beneficiaries in the DAO to include how we are going to uh, spread uh, the money that we raised on. Like uh, there is a few examples of it. Like uh, uh, like the word the mission is real, ongoing mission now by my foundation just because uh, answering all the questions. Uh, how we could help to the women by myself in Instagram. I received a message from a woman like, I don't need the, the food of packs and I don't need any more anything else. I just need the wood in my house because it's cold. And it said like, oh, well, really? And I start to look around like uh, how I can do that. So, and that was uh, like, uh, that what influenced what I'm doing in my foundation. I stopped to do the humanitarian work and I just start to look for the world, you know? So, and this is like uh, the, big, the biggest goal, but also to see on the drawbox for the DAO, if we will do that and we will invite the people to take part in the voting of that, it will like uh, break down it. It will uh, bring the Jamea of the future because we are all the humans. 
and uh, and it also it could be crash because from the uh, flood cause like that are not uh, ideal now yeah so there is a lot of issues that coming up in my mind about so what is your experience for now in your DAO building experience how do you operate it what you find out like is uh, the best way to do it or to organize what is the pros and cons for it so would be really great and it see from the perspective of the company which is operating on the market for <laughs> hundreds of years i'm looking for the question what helps DAO to be sustainable what we should find what is the deal the philosophy so on you know for that i would say for like uh, for from my personal experience and unfortunately we still didn't manage to start DAO in Henken, yeah but um, <laughs> for us sometimes it's even hard to start a slack group because it's something different to microsoft teams or things yeah because you know in, in corporation things it's a bit different yeah but i've been a part of a couple of DAOs, and i think your question of uh, speed over giving opportunity to everyone to contribute i think it's a very good philosophical question yeah because you also we can bring the topic of like voting with the amount of coins you have versus the power of your vote yeah and you know for most of the DAOs, the founders of the DAO have most of the coins so kind of their decision is of course over proportional over things yeah so that's um, actually was a motic mechanism yeah but i think this is a, for me all the DAO was not even about of speed but rather to opportunity to create this deep interest about something uh, um, and uh, what you were referring to this ability to help people you didn't know or to find the solution or topics like when i was starting my journey i thought like what's the difference between the facebook group uh, and the DAO? like literally what was the difference uh, just kind of people in the same platform doing uh, things similar to their interest but then i guess in DAO because it's much more transparent and it's much more interoperable or connected to different to different venues you start getting these benefits of scalability like you know a member of one DAO can do one thing the other you think it's all transparent it's all kind of adjustable and then the financial benefit yeah, because of most of the DAO you can either gather money fast or distribute for things yeah but going uh, answering like my personal answer to your point speed over uh, involvement I think you can never choose both. Yeah, you always, if you would like to give people a chance to everyone to contribute, you need to rely on the slowest person, meaning the, the one who less involved, who is not as active as you, and then you will lose on the speed. But that's why you have like all of the things when the centralized company or centralized governments makes very good, fast or critical decisions rather than democratic ones, because in democratic, it just takes more time and listening. I think I may, I think maybe to add to that, I had a lot of experience working with traditional NGOs, and I think in in my experience in in my former job, uh, a lot of the things that they were trying to do was to really get the voices of the communities that they were trying to help and tie the beneficiaries closer to the donors. And it's difficult. It's difficult to to actually get that community participation because you needed to be in the environment, you needed to invite people in, and it was this very cumbersome process. And I think if you take that process, which normally would take, it would take a ch chunk of the budget for once, but it was all it would also take time to plan and actually make that happen. I think we did one project that took about a month to try to figure out how that we could work better with the, the money from the donors uh, and help the beneficiaries more. I think with a DAO, you get a more instant understanding of what topics could be interesting we actually get the opportunity to harness the you know the wisdom of the crowd in a much more different way than we've been used to and i think that is that is perhaps way more important than speed sometimes because probably maybe you would have gone into a community and you would have done this beneficiary driven innovation and you would have listened into one person but maybe they did have fire in their house or uh, like wood uh, to make a fire so i think i think it's the benefits of actually opening up and inviting in through a DAO setup it greatly uh, surpasses uh, any issues there could be with time. Yeah, totally. Maybe. Uh, that's great. Yeah, and I would like to uh, start with a simple concept. Yeah, that's uh, first of all, like community gathers. Yeah, and have uh, the same aims. Yeah, goals and principles, and only then, um, like DAO can be like organized. Yeah, because like uh, DAO helps community to make like um, actions. Yeah, and to have a like, skill of the game. Yeah, you you vote. It's transparent. Yeah, and you can get 
to the solutions, actions faster. Yeah. And a um, good concept here is like nuns dot um, WTF. Yeah. Is a DAO of artists that uh, each day uh, automatically create NFT and sell to to the com community, like using, uh, using auctions. Yeah. And the guys have like 30,000 uh, uh, of uh, Ethereum. Yeah. It's like enormous sum of money. Yeah. Uh, and um, artists can't spend that on like yachts, like houses and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So they decided to create a DAO. Yeah. And uh, each uh, buyer of NFT uh, have a vote in power. Yeah. And they created a, a super s s simple portal where a community can give different ideas and people can vote. Yeah. For example, they're launching a cartoon. Yeah. A beer, whiskey, and uh, different other initiatives, and even in Paris, um, Basel, Art Basel, um, Biennale, yeah, uh, I have heard, uh, have seen a lot of posters with uh, their sign. Their sign is like a square red or, or blue glasses, yeah, uh, and that sign is like a signature of uh, NFT of uh, CC0 license where everybody can use that glasses whenever they want free of charge. It's like a Nike in the NFT. Yeah, and that's all started with from the community of artists that have the game, uh, that have the idea that it's uh, not cool, um, that Disney keeps all the rights um, on their characters and uh, they cannot create, let's say, merchandise or uh, cartoons with uh, that characters. Yeah, and that's cool that people can vote yeah but uh, overall when you have a DAO yeah you need to find a balance yeah balance for the voting power for different other things uh, as we can see on the previous case that have been like several weeks ago it's not connected with sustainability overall but uh, it's all about DAO yeah Uniswap it's DAO yeah and um, Anderson Horowitz uh, has uh, a large stake of uh, voting power so they blocked uh, like uh, the solutions that can uh, help uniswap scale because anderson Horowitz have the stake in the competitors of uniswap yeah and uh, we have DAO. everything is transparent but yeah like people block uh voting in a very simple way yeah so i think that like community action like balance and distribution are the, like core things of DAO development during all the process you mentioned this sustainability, so uh, so that is the question about the engaging the community into the DAO. That means for me, for DAO to be sustainable, because She's we will see on the, from the perspective uh, with Baneri, I mean, we have a real user, I mean, who is really far away, because to vote, you need at least to have a wallet, and you need to be recognizable in that tree. And actually, I did an experiment, uh, I invited uh, in a women chat, I invited them uh, to the web summit and say to them, like, uh, to receive a ticket, you just need to send me the Polygon wallet. If you don't know that, you just ignore this message. <laughs> so, because, you know, I didn't really have the time to, to explain it. It was like too fast, yeah? And what has happened, the few women uh, who already hold the information, they do the task, and they record it and they create the instruction for others and they set it into the group, how them to help to onboard to the virtual summit to explore what is the what what we as the foundation is going to present there. So this is the engagement for the community for me and this is what drives me to, you know, to still to keep going to creating the DAO because I see like it it's actually possible, maybe it will take more time to invite them into the DAO. But this is uh, what is important for me to do. I mean, this is about the sustainability for the DAO as the organization. So what are your thoughts about the this point uh, of sustainability of DAO if we want to push or put our lives to, you know, to, to drive it? So uh, what is about what we are working on? I think that's a really good point because it's about do you make do you somehow, are you able to ensure that what people gather around is interesting and important enough for them to keep the sustainability of that DAO alive? So how do you take the incentives of actually joining? And I think the topic of sustainability and doing good for the planet, I think that is one that is naturally gearing people to continue to contribute. 
But with a lot of the DAO projects, oftentimes the incentive can be so high that it's once that monetary value or that voting power isn't as attractive anymore, then you drop out of it. And I think, you know, helping people in need, helping the planet, personal well-being is really something where the incentivization keeps going, which will give you that longevity of having a DAO because the way you contribute actually just reinforces that you want to continue to do it. But it's tricky, I think, setting up those mechanisms um, that is, yeah, for the greater good and not for the individual uh, accomplishments. The last, uh, the Victor, so, uh, and they will... I think Victor is our joker. As soon as we become, <laughs> become boring, he will pop up and he will be like with a perfect connection and with like a perfect English without accent, <laughs> like none of us. Um, I mean, like for me, like really the existential problem of DAO um, and big corporations or small corporations or whatever corporations is like, why can't you do something faster in corporation without DAO? Can you do like something more effective not having a DAO? Yeah. And to be very frank, uh, we were, as we're now trying to do it, the answer is, I think what DAO brings, it brings transparency and bringing everyone on the same page. Um, which is unique, which is really unique because uh, uh, the key alternative to is it's like constant alignment, constant like talks, constant meetings to bring everyone on like whatever things. What still is a problem is still exactly what you were saying uh, in the beginning is like a decision make, yeah? like who will make the final decision, who will take the things. Um, and going back to your previous things of like, yeah, if the, you don't have a financial benefit of participating in DAO with incorporation, it will not work because it's an added work. It's an added complexity to to what you do in the in the normal way. Yeah, like, um, because the, like normally, um, uh, like you know, we have like a fund which we invest in sustainable initiatives or sustainable companies. Yeah, and how it's selected, uh, we have different companies who will uh, scout, and then the committee decides. That's how it works now, and the committee consists of I don't know five six people. Yeah. Uh, logically in DAO, you would do, you will have just more people, uh, doing, but you also will have to have opportunities that people more sco scout and find these projects here, yeah, which now would not happen here yeah, because, uh, the currently resources are limited. Yeah. But the outcome would be still kind of the same because uh, you only, the only people who is really interested in this question will vote or who is really interested in this topic would vote because, uh, um, if not, uh, if you're not motivated to do it in any other form, you will just like, what's the purpose? And I think the cool thing, what now happens, for example, in Henkel, like a small initiative with kind of Taoish, is that we can donate our, um, uh, to the charity, like our part of taxation. And you have a list of different projects uh, where every employee can uh, select three. And then uh, the one who selected the most, uh, all of the donations go there. So, uh, kind of similar, uh, similar, but different. Uh, but I think it's, again, it's a power of engaging people in some monetary way, uh, to make him do something extra, which I see is a future. But my question, maybe for you, uh, all of you, did you had any good examples of really as a sustainable initiatives from a big company through the web three? What do you mean by uh, initiative link? Anything like any like initiative, I mean, that something happened. <laughs> Not theoretical things that, yeah, it's nice that we will deliver something, but any project, uh, idea, even concept, anything. I think we, I, we, at Concordium, I think we have one. So I'm, I'm heading up the work we do on ESG and sustainability. And, and we just last week, we announced one with a state owned company, which is renewable energy certificates. So obviously in, in green transition, you know, it's, there's a lot of different energy mixes and the way we normally trade these is that we get a certificate and we buy into that for the coming year. And then at the end of the year, we look at how much energy did we consume? And if we didn't use all of this certificate, we would sell them back and they would just be traded a million times or oh, not a million times. I think it's, I think they like up to four times. I think that's the normal measurement. And, and what we're building now with them is, is a solution that goes in on a quarter on a 15 minute basis and actually timestamps any green energy being produced in that given period, meaning that you have a certificate that you can trust and that can't be traded. And I think that is that is something for a green transition that really makes sense because it's about 
actually fueling money into the places that are trying to decarbonize the way we we do energy. Um, so to me, that is that is a really really cool solution that I'm insanely excited about. Um, not that much of a DAO topic, but but it's 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 really uh, I think it's an impressive. It's a state-owned company choosing a, a public blockchain and trying to make sure that you know we don't fiddle around in 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 our energy claims. So it's it's about solving the problem of greenwashing, which is super great. I mean, I think that is exactly what we're looking as a hand can try to try to do it here. Yeah? How, how we can be more transparent and more, and uh, but also more impactful as well. Yes. Yeah, that okay. was my question to you actually, uh, Valeria. Like, what uh, what the handle is looking for in, in a way of uh, transition? Will be what what the task you are solving as a you know as a company which is operating or to, to, yeah. to, to, uh, to be very frank, Alisa, in some cases two things. The first one is the transparency in the, all the actions we already do. Because it's crazy, like if you really look uh, at the amount of initiatives we're involved or we're contributing, it's it's massive. And we published this massive uh, sustainability report, but I guess only very limited amount of sustainability freaks read this report uh, <laughs> because it's like 160 pages or something. Yeah? Um, and then it's not transparent, like uh, it's like it's such as that everyone could see it and can be even exposed to the bigger circle that would be the first one and then it's also kind of how could we with our brands help different communities yeah because i remember we had uh, we're having so many different great initiatives like the social plastic initiative or support like the farming in amazonian things but again it's all it's not i would say they, they, so they, they're very simple answer how to bring it more transparently and wider to the community of our actions to encourage other companies to participate, yes, and to educate more of our shoppers to be more mindful in choosing the products and using the... Yeah, I, I have uh, a, a suggestion, yes, like... Um, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Alicia, uh, Alicia mentioned a cool thing about uh, sign up in, in, the, in the wallet and set up in Polygon address to attend uh, like that conference. And I think uh, that's what uh, huge companies should start with, yeah, uh, with, from education of their employees about how to uh, sign up the, uh, and create a wallet, yeah, and uh, to communicate with blockchain. I love the initiative of uh, Louis Vuitton and Maria Hennessy about um, set up in a program of uh, getting all the diplomas and certification in NFT. For example, you are passing uh, an internal exam, yeah, in, in the company, yeah, and you you are getting an NFT, yeah, and you need to create a wallet in MetaMask, yeah, to get that certificate, yeah, and that's cool because nobody cares about like certificates when they uh, um, are at home, yeah, like when they're printed. Yeah, it's, it's not sustainable to print a certificate. Yeah? Uh, but yeah, overall, you can have um, a wallet with different certificates. Yeah, and you can build up like a gamification thing about uh, all sustainability. Yeah, you participate in that project. Yeah, you get a drop in the, the uh, fi uh, finally in the end of the quarter, let's say. Yeah, and by, by um, making that tiny step, uh, you give people access to transparency, like he can check his friend's wallet, uh, what's going on there, yeah, about different diplomas, and then you start building and um, getting more curiosity from the employees, yeah, and it's super simple, just to set up a wallet and uh, a, a picture that's uh, dropping uh, on the wallet of people. I think that's such an interesting idea, so I, so, I mean, I know you said that not a lot of people care about certificates. We have we have a use case building that is seafarer certificate. So people going out on boats. And the way it works today is that you have like a briefcase of the actual certificates with you because it's such a dangerous job that you need to have all of these credentials because the company is is responsible for your life. Uh, but but you carry around this briefcase and we're looking into it with one of the, the bigger marine schools in terms of can we actually do so? Concordium has this ID layer, so you're you're identified, but you don't necessarily give out your ID, so you're still private. But you get a a, a Solbon token with that information in that ID credential proof, and it's just a zero knowledge proof saying, do you actually have the right credentials to go work on this boat? But I'm not giving away all of the information about myself, where I'm birthed, and all of those things. 
And I think those use cases are going to be massive uh, in this coming period. And I think I completely agree with you, Andrew. A good place to start would be like, I don't know, a company like IBM who does a lot of internal training or any company that does internal training start with that. But there are actually industries where this is a huge issue. I mean, imagine if I'm going out on a drilling platform or wherever I'm going to go and I just steal a friend of mine's paper. You need to be sure that it's actually me and I was the one who achieved that certificate. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we can use multi-signature there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's gotcha. We are almost run out of time of the panel and the tradition for the panel is uh, to give uh, the last minute for each one. But before, I would love for to share, like, uh, thank you guys. You, like, you, you give the perspective for Hankel from the internal side. But the first idea was coming up in my mind. It was for such a big company to work and to aggregate the climate doubt this that is already on the market they are so beautiful in the around on a different way so why sometimes you know there is the question of we need to invent something or just to aggregate them to invite to collaborate to collaborate because you have so amazing like um kind of a power you know because you have the resources and this is the way how you could also uh, support the climate DAO and all other topics you have already on board in your mind as a company yet to develop. So, and this is also what we are bringing here as Web3 Stronger Together, just to, to put us all, all together in one boat and to see, to look around, uh, what, what is, uh, what we can use, what, what is already done, like how we could uh, help uh, to uh, integrate it in what we have already. So. On the last uh, part, I would, uh, it would be the free mic, you know, whenever you say whatever you want, even if it's out of the topic about the DAO, you know, just you are a, a moment of glory, uh, take it and say she works, uh, anything you want about you, about what you take with you from this discussion, whatever is coming up in on your mind. With the first time. <laughs> we are in the DAO panel. <laughs> The first would say, I first go ahead. Okay, I'll be the first. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it is great to chat here to discuss um, and to learn more about the initiative in Henkel and, uh, yeah, from um, Concordium. Yeah, to learn more a little bit about like different use cases. Uh, yeah, I guess um, uh, the people who watch uh, the stream enjoyed yeah, and got some at least one idea that they can uh, apply to their their life yes uh, and they hope their life uh, will be better from this <laughs> that was such a nice message andrew i was i was getting ready to come with like a pledge that i really wanted to to bring out but that was just really beautiful i think i want to follow up on something you said valerie which is um which is about this ESG reporting that a lot of companies have to, has to do i've been working for a few months on actually figuring out a way to do that using a blockchain to make sure that the data is accurate, that you can actually share it among your ecosystem participants and that you as an individual can actually access it. So it's it's a cry for help to the community and everyone in, in Web3 Stronger Together. If, if you have anything on ESG reporting or any ideas, I would love to connect with you. Thanks a lot. No, no, really. Uh, and my closing words would be, I actually want to thank Laran Laran who organized it and kicked it off because you know he was my kind of a uh, bridge uh, to from corporate to the web3 world and uh, actually that's a baby of his of really such a nice uh, uh, speakers like uh, Andrew Maria you and even popping up Victor was also cool um, and of course a great moderator of you Alyssa so oh. so so glad that um, there is a space of not just coin pumps and the shit posts but uh, real people talking uh, some uh, human language so, Laran, it's a big thank you that you're creating such a community. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of you. And uh, I would say, like, my last invitation would be before uh, to end up uh, this day to find at least someone, one person or a project or someone, and to invite, I don't know, to ask a question, to propose something, just to take at least one connection, which it would be useful for your before you go to sleep, you know, just yeah. set the plan, you know, to invite, to contribute, because, you know, whenever it happens now, 
you will have this something in, in, in your future, which is in very long. So maybe we, everybody will think about that before to go out from the space of the Evelyn. And, and yeah, all those have a, um, you know, a lot of uh, thankful for the team, for the Web3 stronger together and for Evelyn team, which is uh, supporting on behind all what is uh, happening around. And this is uh, so strong because, uh, you know, we are in so many fucking chats now, but we are together and we are strong. So enjoy your evening uh, and enjoy your next uh, day as well. It's going to be a lot of um, few fire chats, which will bring us a little bit fire maybe in the discussion. But I'm so happy that uh, we have as I mentioned before, quite a cozy conversation and I enjoyed a lot enjoyed to know you and to know you a little bit better. So thank you so much again. Thanks again to our guests and thank you everyone for listening. Thanks also to the Badiam Music team for providing their music. You can check them out on badiammusic.com. All of the supporting information is on our website, blockchainrecorded.com. You can listen to us on Google, Apple, and Amazon podcasts, as well as on YouTube, Spotify, Radio Public, and Stitcher. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube, where we are super grateful for your support. Stay tuned for our next episode.